Hi, this is David. Welcome to the Stream of David. Today, we're going to focus on manifesting money. My intention with these podcasts are to serve those who are looking for answers to life's questions and solutions to their problems from a source perspective. As I have shared previously, I have been manifesting intentionally since 1982, when I thought I had invented the Law of Attraction. Obviously, that was not true. The law of attraction has always been and always will be. But I certainly did tap into something, a universal power at a very young age, long before the law of attraction was widely known. And since that time, I have had a lot of success in business, success in manifesting money, and success in manifesting the material things that I want. And I will tell you, That focusing on manifesting these things as my chief goal brought a lot of joy in my life, but also created a lot of problems that were unnecessary. The success of the secret series of books and movies has certainly spawned a number of people who are teaching the law of attraction, mainly focused on the acquisition of wealth. And we are going to hone in on that topic here today as well. But I do want you to know that my focus and my teachings is always on big picture, broad perspective, full abundance in every single area of your life. In fact, money, in my opinion, is number three down the list when I think about a hierarchy of things and order of importance that I want to manifest. Coming in at the top of that list, number one is health. You can have all the money in the world, all the things, and some good people around you, but if you do not have your health, you're not going to be able to enjoy the other things nearly as much. Number two on my list is people. I believe very strongly from my own experience that manifesting money and things without the right people to share it with uh, is a very empty feeling. It does not bring the joy that you are likely looking for with the additional money. As I said, number three is money. Uh, Money is very important. It allows us freedom. It allows us experiences. It allows us comfort and luxury and can bring a degree of joy certainly to our lives. I'm not going to kid you about that. Having money is uh, far preferable to not having money. I have been uh, well off and I have been very poor (laughs) and and in between several times in my life. And I can tell you uh, that I would much rather have a constant flow of money coming to me uh, than not. And number four on the list are things. I have shared that in my late 20s, early 30s, I had a very good income and I was very good at attracting things. I had a nice home that was fully furnished. I had a Porsche and a Mercedes in the garage. I lived in a gated country club community. Outwardly, I had all of the things that uh, most people my age wanted. But at that time, I didn't have uh, deep friendships with anyone. I was in a relationship with someone who I was really no longer in love with. We were together mostly because of the things that we had and the status that we had achieved. And I will tell you that things and money uh, grow tiresome pretty fast when you don't have the right people in your life to share them with. So while you can certainly focus on overall abundance and manifesting the things in your life in abundance that you want in all of these areas and more, I know that we are human. And if you are suffering from a lack of money, it's very easy to, uh, in your meditative state, to really focus all of your attention on manifesting money. You hear people talk about uh, using the law of attraction to win the lottery and things like that. I will tell you that uh, a broader focus a general well-being and allowing all of these things to flow magically to you from multiple sources has been far more effective for me and everyone that I know that has had success uh, manifesting their dreams. I will also caution uh, from my experience to focus on manifesting money in abundance without bringing your career or business prospects into the equation at all. Allow money to flow to you from various magical avenues. And by magical, you probably have 
experienced at some point in your life things coming to you that you were not expecting that almost seemed like magic. That's what I mean. I remember back in 1996 uh, when my partner and I uh, relocated from Atlanta to or the Orlando area. We were living in a, a small rent house in Lake Mary, Florida. And the company that I had gotten transferred with, uh, the opening of the business that I was running for them got delayed. And I was at home, but I also uh, was just making a base salary. I wasn't making the bonus money that I was accustomed to earning. And so our income had dropped when we first moved uh, into this house. So much so that we had bills that we couldn't pay. In fact, my partner uh, went back uh, to his old job in Atlanta just to make extra money for a while. And I was living alone in the house with our two dogs, really concerned about how I was going to catch up on bills. And I will say at this time in my life, I was already very confident that I would always be okay. I had been certainly broke at times in my life by then and always found a way to make ends meet to pay all of my bills. And I always had a roof over my head and I always had a car to drive and I always had everything really taken care of one way or another, even though I had no safety net, cer certainly from family or friends or anything like that. I'd been on my own since you know my late teens. But I was able to always hold on to my confidence that no matter what happened, I would always be okay. And sure enough, one morning, I woke up, went out front to get the newspaper uh, with our chocolate lab, Jordan, and the sprinklers had been on in the middle of the night. The driveway was all wet, and I walked down and grabbed the paper, and of course the dog was always trying to wrestle the paper out of my hands. And we were playing a little bit, the sun was shining, and I looked over on the wet driveway and saw something stuck to the driveway and it was up near the garage door. So I walked over, looked down and it looked like a hundred dollar bill. So I pried the wet hundred dollar bill off of the driveway and looked at it really in amazement that a hundred dollars was laying on my driveway, but it was really thick. So I dug in between with my fingernails and started peeling apart and I ended up peeling apart four $100 bills that were laying wet on my driveway. I had no idea who this money could belong to. There was no reason that anyone other than myself would be walking up my driveway that far by the garage door. So I took that as a sign from the universe that that was the money that I needed and indeed it did help me catch up on my bills. There was another time a few years later when we were buying our first home and as many do, when we were buying our first home, we were really scraping together the money for the down payment and the closing costs to be able to go to closing and move in. And we were falling short almost $5,000. There was some invested money that we thought we had access to that we found out that we did not have access to. So we were falling short and we were within two weeks of closing on this house. And out of nowhere, I received a call from my stepmother telling me that our father had purchased life insurance policies for us when we were really young. And again, this is my father who never gave us money or did a whole lot for us financially. So this was really out of the blue. And that these life insurance policies had a dollar value. And at this age, I could now cash in this life insurance policy or I could just hold on to it, continue to pay into it and use it like a regular life insurance policy. Well, needless to say, we needed the money, so I cashed it in. And sure enough, it was just enough to allow us to go to closing and to buy our house. I know my stories here are not that unusual. I'm sure things like that have happened to many of you. If they haven't, then you really do need to start harnessing the power of the universe to allow abundance to flow to you financially and in other ways. But these are just two examples of how in my lifetime, money has appeared to me magically and certainly I have generated large sums of income, job promotions, bonuses, and things like that over the years that I could continue to share too. But money really can flow to us magically and sometimes when we need it the most. And that's really what utilizing the power of law of attraction is all about. I hate to say using the law of attraction because, you know, the law of attraction is always happening. Just like I always say, you know, the law of attraction is like gravity. You're not going to really use it. It's, it's going to occur no matter what. It's really where you are projecting your thought and what your belief system is that's going to impact what you're manifesting. And our projected thought 
uh, is somewhat easy to control because certainly we can meditate every day. Uh, we can quiet our minds. We can allow our stream to flow, feel that connection to a spiritual energy that we all have and get into the, the right clear frame of mind and be very creative in our thinking and consistently project thoughts toward what we want and watch those things come to be. But our long held beliefs, things that we believe since childhood can be far more difficult to change. So I'm setting the intention that the stream will come in today and talk about manifesting money, talk about how to shift belief systems so that if this has been a problem for you for a long time, and I know for a lot of you it has, that you can work toward permanently changing your point of view and your belief system toward manifesting money. And of course, through your daily meditations, keeping yourself focusing and projecting your thought toward what is wanted in regard to everything in your life, but certainly money, because as I've said, obviously it allows the freedom and the comfort and the luxury and the, the lifestyle that we're all looking for. And perhaps I shouldn't say we're all looking for, because I know different people want different things, but even the people who want the simplest life, certainly a flow of income so that you can keep a roof over your head and keep your utilities paid and, and, and you know, have food and things like that. I'm sure that that's meaningful to you as well. And you're certainly in my thoughts as we produce this. And I'm sure part of what the stream's message will be as well. So I will take a quick break. I am going to get into my meditative state. And when we return, you'll be hearing directly from the stream. We'll be right back. We are here, David. David has set the intention for us to come today and discuss the manifestation of money. We know that this topic is of particular interest to many as your ability to manifest money directly impacts your lives in a number of areas. From our perspective, there are no rules to what you manifest in any particular order. You came here to be free, to seek joy, and to place obstacles in your path for the joy of overcoming them. You associate money with your freedom, you associate money to some degree with your joy, and those obstacles that you place in your path are very often tied to money. So this is an important topic. We will begin by telling you that everything that you are manifesting in your life which is everything that is occurring and materializing in your life is a result of your projected thought. And the majority of your projected thought occurs automatically because of your beliefs. And in your current manifested human reality, there are many, many beliefs regarding money. We hear that money is hard to acquire. You say money does not grow on trees, that money is the root of all evil. And many are told from a very young age that you have to work hard for money, that the best money is old money, meaning that it's inherited and that a fool and his money are soon to be parted. Now, we are not ones to use a lot of these cliches, but our point is that there are more of these regarding money than anything else. So it's no wonder that so many have such strong opinions and deep-rooted beliefs regarding money. We are here to tell you that like everything else in your manifested reality, Money 
can be as easy to manifest or as difficult as you make it. And these deeply rooted, long-standing beliefs hold many of you back from acquiring the flow of abundance that you look for on this topic. You tie your ability to manifest money to your family, to your nation, to your town, to your marital status, and of course, to your career or profession. Many of you enjoy spending only to feel guilt afterward, while others experience physical pain at the thought of spending their money. Many want to acquire a large mass reserve of money, while others resort to activities that they find unpleasant or undesirable because they believe that is their only path toward financial abundance. Of course, all of these beliefs are rooted in fear, which comes quite easily because your society has tied so many things to money. You perceive that your food, your shelter, and your overall well-being are all tied to your ability to manifest money. Many of you dream of acquiring a large sum of money to facilitate your departure from a job that you despise or a partner that you no longer want to be associated with. So if you're looking for improvement in your ability to manifest money, you must first ask yourself, what is your belief regarding money? Do you believe that it comes easily? Do you believe that it can come to you from various avenues that are not tied to money or business? Do you believe in your power to manifest anything? And do you believe that you are the same as those that you perceive for whom money manifests easily? You likely know at least one person that fell into money or for whom money flows easily without hard work. The one who seems to find a new source of income at every turn. Think of them. And think of the difference between yourself and them. Are they blessed? If they are blessed, why are you not blessed? Are they better at attracting? Are your attractors malfunctioning? We are here to tell you that none of this is true. That for each and every one of you, you manifest your own blessings from within. There is no higher power looking down upon the earth, choosing who is blessed and who is not. We promise you that you did not come here for our blessings, and we do not offer them, because you do not need them. Our love, our light, our powerful creative energy, is spread evenly throughout this universe. There are no blessings from us, and there is no choosing from us. You came to be the one who chooses, to be the one who samples and discerns your own preference. For some of you, that preference is a life with no financial abundance, simplicity, and that is perfectly fine. For others, you seek more. You enjoy the material nature of your world. You are a physically manifested being, living a physically manifested experience. And that very much includes material things. And while you do not necessarily need money to acquire material things, money can certainly facilitate the acquisition of that and more. So how do you change your beliefs toward money? You start by identifying the root of your long-held beliefs. Perhaps it was your upbringing. 
perhaps it was your family. Making this determination will allow you to gain perspective on how you came to believe the way that you do. And once you've established that perspective, you may release it once and for all. Those were the beliefs of someone else that you absorbed. It did not have to be and does not have to continue. You are in charge of your beliefs. And though it may seem that they are so absorbed in you that they are impossible to change, this is not the case. Your addiction to your beliefs can be very similar to an addiction to a substance. It is our promise to you that once you identify the root cause, you will be able to release it. You will then be able to move on and in your daily meditations, once you reach the valley of your meditation, meaning that you have completely cleared your mind and reached what we call a place of neutrality, meaning that your mind is clear and your emotion is positive, you may begin reestablishing new beliefs regarding the flow of money. And when you are changing a long-standing unwanted belief, you must commit to daily meditations, projecting your thought toward what is wanted, and doing so in a way that is confident, where you understand that the place where you stand at the moment is simply a result of your previous projected thought, and that it stands as an example of the perfection of the universe because you are living the vibration that you've been omitting. This is a very positive thing. For even if your current condition is unwanted, once you identify that you created it, you will now have the confidence to create in a different direction, to intentionally focus toward what is wanted so that you will find yourself in the very near future standing in a place that is more desirable to you. So in these meditations, you imagine the flow of increased money coming to you. You feel the essence of what this increased income will feel like. You mentally experience your ability to do more, to have more freedom, to buy the things that you truly desire. Mentally, walk through a day where bills arrive and you pay them without giving it a second thought, where some new thing appears in front of you and you are able to acquire it turning over your dollars in joy, knowing that they're going to flow right back to you. Allow yourself to go on an emotional ride where you see yourself traveling, starting a business, buying a home, acquiring new furnishings, shopping for clothing, driving that new car, perhaps walking away from a job that no longer pleases you. Imagine yourself doing whatever it is that you desire, spending your dollars freely, with no doubt, with no worry, in complete confidence of your continued ability to manifest the money that you want. If you're imagining this now, savor this feeling, commit it to memory, and use this again and again and again during your meditations and any time doubt regarding money enters your mind. You possess the power to eliminate the things in your life that trigger doubt, that trigger negative feelings toward money. It helps very much to identify what these triggers are. Give them a label so that you recognize them at their onset. 
And when you feel one of these triggers coming on during a meditation or out of a meditation, in your normal day-to-day life, you will begin to know what's triggering your negative thoughts toward the manifestation of money or anything else for that matter. And once you can identify it, you can stop it in its tracks and not allow yourself to go down that negative path. So when that credit card statement comes in and you rip it open, read it in joy, knowing that the money to pay that bill in full is flowing right to you. In addition to the consistency in your meditations, you must employ a degree of patience. You see, lack of patience is a very common way to cancel out your desired manifestation. You clear, you meditate, you focus, you project your thought toward what is wanted and allow the universal gestation period of your manifestation to occur. Imagine what our universe would be like if everything that every person thought of manifested instantly. Your world would be overrun with vacation homes and Bentleys. Your oceans would be full of yachts. It doesn't sound like such a problem now, but if it truly occurred, it would be. And from a broader perspective, if anyone or anything in this universe had the ability to manifest their desires instantly, the heavens would be full of new planets. For many of you at one point or another have wished to go and live on your own planet. We will tell you that serendipity, manifesting conditions that involve other humans' behavior, can be manifested very quickly, while material manifestations take longer. That is because in your human relationships, you are dealing with a vibrational match that can be instantaneous. While creating a flow of money or an object can take a bit longer. This is the perfection of your universe by design. We hope that we have adequately explained why your manifestations are not instantaneous and that as much as you may believe that you need an increased significant flow of money immediately, that the universe will ensure that you are actually ready for this new manifestation before it arrives. Perhaps you have heard of one who has won a massive jackpot lottery only to see their lives in ruins within a few years. They through their lack of resistance, created the manifestation of the jackpot. And in the case of a lottery, a large sum of money flowed very quickly and indeed proved to be too much for that person to handle. While you may or may not be looking for a lottery jackpot, it is our promise to you that if you focus your thoughts toward what is wanted in a confident, relaxed way, the money, whether in a large jackpot or a flowing stream, will manifest. And you will be amazed at the ways the universe will bring it your way. So be confident, be patient, And be ready, for your financial improvement is on its way. And if in this process you find yourself experiencing doubt, that you are in the moment unable to release, our guidance is that you move away from the topic until you're ready to return to it in a more confident way. Simply change the subject. And within a day's span... If you have not found your way back to confidence on the topic and you are unable to quiet your mind, reach the valley of your meditation, the place of neutrality, then think of employing external tools. Listening to this 
or perhaps a guided meditation around this topic or anything that will soothe you and make you feel better about the subject of manifesting money will help to bring you back into alignment with your desire. We will always tell you that you came to this life fully equipped with all the tools you need to manifest your desires. But we are also well aware of the amount of negative information that comes to you via your devices every day. We of course recommend turning these off or at least turning off the feed to the thing that is bringing you the negative information that is useless to you and replacing it with a feed of something positive, something uplifting, something that helps guide you back to the place where you wish to be. Nothing will ever replace your ability from wherever you are to connect with your stream. Your stream is always available to you, whether you are locked in a padded cell, standing in line at the airport, or sitting in rush hour traffic. In the most stressful or oppressive situation, as long as you are in physical safety, you possess the ability to quiet your mind and connect to us, your stream. We love you and we are always here for you. And that is all we have on the topic of money. Because manifesting money is as easy as you choose to make it. That is all. Hi, it's David. I just finished listening to the playback from the stream. And I'm glad that they focused on changing beliefs. Because in my opinion, our beliefs regarding money are the number one thing that keep it from us. And I know that the stream and I and many other channels and spiritual gurus uh, certainly believe in daily meditation and the importance of focusing thought toward what is wanted. But obviously, if we meditate and then get up from our meditation and fall right back into our previous beliefs of lack when it comes to the subject of money or really anything, that we're only canceling out the very thing that we just meditated and focused on attracting. I once saw a medium who counseled me and said that the reason that I wasn't attracting this new career path that I wanted was because I was playing ping pong with the topic in my head. Of course, I knew exactly what she was talking about and it was a very good analogy because I did exactly that. I would start thinking about something that I wanted to do in a new business venture and then right away I would cancel it out thinking that it wasn't possible. I've also used a pendulum around these topics. And I discovered very quickly, and the stream has confirmed this about idolization and pendulums and things like that, that they hold the power that you give them and that a pendulum is simply reading your current vibration. And I even tested the theory. I would get myself uh, really into a positive meditative state, uh, really work up my energy flow regarding a topic, and then I would come out of the meditation and use the pendulum. And of course, you know, coming out of your meditative state your vibration is very, very high at that moment, and you'll get a very strong reaction from a pendulum, usually in the direction of the very thing that you were just meditating about. So if you're meditating and focusing on improving your business or your career, and you ask your pendulum yes or no questions regarding that topic, it will affirm exactly what you believe in that moment. And if you've allowed your energy to fall, say you go to the pendulum the next day and ask the very same questions before meditating, perhaps when your energy is, is much lower, your vibration is much lower, you're going to get a different answer because the pendulum is simply reading your vibration. But the important thing to note here is that your vibration is your attractor. So while the pendulum is certainly not predicting a predetermined outcome because you have the ability to change the future with your projected thought it is successfully reading your current vibration and your consistent current vibration will ultimately shape your belief on that topic 
but you really don't need a pendulum to tell you where your vibration is or what you believe. My only advice regarding a pendulum is if you do choose to use one, you simply use it to test your current vibration. And if your vibration is not where you want it to be, and if you're not getting the answers that you want, you need to put the pendulum down and meditate and get your focus to where you want it to be. Because if your vibration is there, you are attracting that very thing that you're thinking about. And in my opinion, the key is consistency. And that doesn't mean that you can never allow yourself to have a negative thought. I think doubt is, uh, is natural, but we can control the amount of doubt that we allow into our thought patterns. And that if we identify the doubt early on, and as I have suggested and the guidance that we receive from the stream suggests, we need to label it. We need to be able to identify it at its onset so that we can stop it quickly. And by stopping it, I don't mean being all stressed out that you're experiencing it because you think that you were uh, miscreating in that moment. Simply identifying, recognizing the onset of something unwanted, an unwanted thought, and moving away from it and changing it to a more positive thought, to thinking about what is wanted. And if you can't get there, at least reaching a place of neutral and changing your mind towards something else. Attraction is all about the thought that we project consistently. And we absolutely have the power to shape our consistent thoughts. I hope this topic has been helpful for you. I would be happy to discuss it. If you would like to comment on the blog, uh, you can reach us if you haven't already discovered uh, the stream of david.com is the website. All of the podcasts are there. Uh, and it's, there's also a blog there where we can discuss these topics. Or you can email me at david at the stream of david.com. You can also follow us on social media. We post to Instagram daily, and the page is The Stream of David. We also have a Facebook page that's also called The Stream of David. And you can follow us on Twitter at The Stream O David. So we have multiple avenues to connect and communicate, and we absolutely post uh, positive thoughts and excerpts from uh, some of the writings that I'm doing right now while I'm channeling the stream, and I uh, post those daily. So please check out the social media sites and the website. I enjoy producing these podcasts very much, and I know that people have found them helpful. And my intention is to also build a community around the teachings of the stream and the Abraham Hicks material. You know, I've said several times that I'm a, a huge fan of their work. And there's obviously a lot of integration going on here and, and pretty much consistency, although the stream's message does have a different tone uh, and is a little more simplified and direct, in my opinion. I would love to get to a place in our online community where I can take specific topics by popularity and cover those in future podcasts. Right now, I'm taking some requests via email, and some of the emails that I have received have been questioning uh, some of the current events, uh, the natural disasters that we're seeing uh, that seem to have, over the summertime, increased. And also, there are some questions, obviously, around some of the uh, the mass uh, killings and terrorism that have been happening, and, and certainly we can get the stream's perspective on that. So I think we're going to perhaps combine those topics and cover that in next week's podcast. So I hope you have subscribed so that you're getting the feed weekly. We do post uh, every week, uh, either Sunday or Monday, so that you have a fresh podcast to start each week with. And if you've had trouble finding a place to subscribe, we're on multiple sites at this point, including iTunes. But the easiest way to communicate is to uh, go to our website, thestreamofdavid.com. All of the podcasts are there, and you can subscribe right from there. I hope you enjoyed this week's show, and I look forward to talking to you again next week and bringing you the stream's message. Thank you. Thank you.